Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Sige po, tayo po tayo. We're going to worship God. And para sa ating mga kasama online, good afternoon and welcome sa ating 2 p.m. service. Um, we're all gonna worship God together here, physically and online. But let me just read this um, word of encouragement from the Bible. Let's read from Psalm chapter 99, verse 1 to 5. The Bible says, Let the Lord reign. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king in his might loves justice. You have established equity and you have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the name, exalt the Lord our God. Worship at His footstool. Holy is He. Lord, ito ka. This is who you are. You are holy, God. You are set apart, God. Pero at the same time, God, you are near us, God. And Lord, this is who you are. You are holy, you are righteous, God. You're exalted forever and ever. And Lord, you execute justice, and righteousness, God, holiness. And that is why we can worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Let's all worship God. Good afternoon, church. Let's give God the best.
powerful, holy, righteous God. I just felt this in my heart to read this verse in the book of Matthew. It's not going to be on the screen. But if you have your Bibles with you, open your Bibles in Matthew chapter 5. It says here, Matthew chapter 5, verse 23. If you are offering your gift at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come offer your gift. has never been so divided <laughs> this past few weeks. But the Bible says that before we come here, we're offering this, we're offering to God our worship, our lives every day. But if there's something against in our heart, it is a brother or a sister. Come, be reconciled first. Come, be reconciled. If there's anything that you need to lift to God right now, a hatred, forgiveness, an offense, Lift that up to God. Later on, if you need to message someone, call someone, by all means, do so. Maybe that person is, you know, God is speaking to you right now. <laughs> Ang galing, di ba? Kasi, well, that person is never gonna expect na ikaw nga yung offended, pero ikaw pa yung lumapit sa kanya to be reconciled. That guy, that person will never gonna expect that. Sasabihin niya, Iba ang ginagawa ng Panginoon sa'yo. Iba ang ginagawa ng Lord sa'yo. This is, not, this is not easy. But I hope by the grace of God, after the preaching of the Word, He would give us the grace, the conviction in our heart to be a catalyst of reconciliation in our nation, more so in our families. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, Allow us, God. Use us, God. Use us. We've been singing that. Use us, God. Use us. Use us, God, to be a catalyst of reconciliation, God, sa aming mga pamilya. Give us the words. Bigay mo sa amin yung kalakasan, katapangan, Panginoon, na kami na yung lumapit. And magtiwala sa iyo, Panginoon, na bagabat hindi namin alam ang sasabihin sa kanya. The mere fact na we made an intention to come and be reconciled, God, bless us with words. Give us the patience, God. And Lord, just teach us to love others as you have loved us. Tulungan mo, Panginoon. Tulungan mo kami. As you have said in your word, Lord, no matter whatever political color we belong or whatever, God, the Bible says that there is neither Jew, nor Greek, nor slave, nor master. We are all one in the body of Christ. And I pray this will be true for us. Thank you, Lord. May you do this for us. Hindi namin to kayang mag-isa. Pero, Panginoon, tulungan mo kami. Thank you, Lord. This we ask in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Sige po, mga kaupo tayo. Good afternoon, and you may be seated. Thank you for coming here on site, worshiping with us. And para sa mga kasama natin online, thank you. I hope that you are comfortable and talagang focused worshiping God with us here. And um, if you're online right now and you missed na mag-worship kasama tayo today here, uh, wag po kayong mag-alala. This Wednesday, no? This Wednesday. Sabi mo sa katabi mo dito, this Wednesday. This Wednesday. Meron tayong worship night, no? So, again, if you're online, you missed the opportunity to worship with us. Okay, baliktad ang araw mo, no? Nasa gabi ang, ano, nasa madaling araw ang pasok mo. And then, before you actually go to work, you can come join us, no? 7 p.m. this Wednesday and worship with us, no? Worship night. And uh, in addition to that, uh, this September, we're going to have a singles retreat. Uh, it's entitled Disconnect. 
no? Uh, it's a time for, you know, the singles to come together. It's been a while since a single uh, ha- had a chance to come together, no? And, you know, have fellowship and this is a great opportunity. And talagang para ma-disconnect tayo from the regular routine and ma-disconnect tayo with the Lord and, um, alam mo, with ourselves. Join na kayo. Uh, you can scan the QR code to register and uh, tawag doon, you can go back uh, as a concierge if you're here for any inquiries that you, uh, you may need. Uh, payment options and whatnot will be more than happy to help you. No? And uh, lastly, we want to give you an update sa nangyayari sa Ukraine. Uh, tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang mga kaganapan sa Ukraine pero tuloy-tuloy din ang kabutihan ng Panginoon. No? Uh, sa mga kababayan sa Ukraine, sa mga sabayan ng Ukraine. And patuloy ang pag ng Panginoon. And so, we want to thank you for giving and praying. And we want to give you this update ko. Ano na nangyari? Let's watch this video. Last Sunday, we celebrated uh, second Easter in a row because uh, that was Easter according to a uh, liturgical calendar used in Ukraine. We looked around our city and we've noticed that most of the refugees are mothers and children. They abandoned their houses, their homes, their fathers, sons, brothers, uh, husbands uh, are in Ukraine fighting the war. So I figured we're celebrating our Easter. What about them? How are they going to feel being here? They welcomed people, love them, people want to serve them, but it's Easter. So I told my team, we need to do something for these people. And we did. I met first with a couple of Ukrainians from our church and I said, <laughs> asked them, what needs to be part of this meeting so Ukrainians will feel like it's a Ukrainian Easter? And they said, food. <laughs> so we catered food for them and we ordered from a Ukrainian bakery. Part of the tradition in Ukraine is they eat this bread and they call it Pascha. So there's no Easter without it. So we ordered like 250 mini versions of that and we wrapped it as a nice souvenir with a little card with Easter greetings and info about our church. As you should see the faces of those people. I mean, those ladies and kids. There was a one grandma, Babushka. Her face was just glowing. She was crying, she was shaking. She was like, she was choosing the best one for her and her son. We had a total of 250 people and I would say only 20% of that were our church. Majority of those were Ukrainians and we had a worship that was Ukrainian, Polish, English. It was just one of the most beautiful things, hearing the whole room singing songs in three languages. That Sunday, we all felt like even if we are exhausted, we are in the right place at the right time. Being there for those Ukrainians, serving them, feeding them, making them feel at home, preaching gospel was the place for us to be. It was one of the most fulfilling Sundays that I have ever experienced as a, as a lead pastor in this church. I would like to thank from the depth and the bottom of my heart to all of you who lead your churches in a way that they respond to this crisis with generosity and prayers, and they are making together with our work here a big impact. Thank you for being with us and Ukrainians in this together. We celebrated Easter and to really uh, minister and connect with the Ukrainians. Talagang well thought of events and food talaga in fellowship nila. No? And they had a very meaningful time together. Uh, and so let's continue to pray that God would continue the good work that He has started in the hearts of people there. And I want to thank you for praying and giving to the, no, uh, to the cause uh, for the Ukraine. And if you would open your Bibles again with me, uh, we're going to read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. The Bible says that He is God who supplies the seed for the sower and the bread for food will also uh, supply the and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. It is you who gives us the seed that we plant, God. It is you who give us the bread that we need for every day, God. I pray that you may find us faithful, God. 
so that all the more mapas, mas mapagkatiwalaan mo pa kami Panginoon and that we would continue to plant seeds in whatever cause your tithes or offering to the Ukraine or supporting or may even blessing someone just planting those seeds God and I, I, I pray that fruitfulness will come about Lord I pray for opportunities for growth para sa mga nandito ngayon and online for their work increase God and even promotion for them God and just bless them God and just um, provide all of their needs God thank you Lord and this is we pray Amen um, if you want to give and uh, you're, you you want to go old school there tayo mga offering envelopes and pwede nyo ihulog sa offering envelope paglabas and then but if you're like me my wife we actually pray about it together and then we give our tithes online no? uh, it's a good way and efficient way then to give so thank you so much and God bless Why don't we uh, start with a word of prayer? Lord, we thank you for your uh, grace for us today. Lord, we worship kami through song kanina. And passionately, Lord God, we poured out our hearts. And Lord, you ministered to us. Umpisa pa lang. And Lord, you've given us another chance, Lord God, to worship you through the giving of uh, you know, our giving. And God, right now, we thank you. That another opportunity for us to worship you through listening to the word and eating the word, Lord God, today. Lord, we are so excited and we thank you, Lord God, that you are with us and you will speak and help us to uh, eat your word and have that nourishment that we need today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, magandang, maganda po kayo at guwapo kayo <laughs> yung hapon na ito. Kahit mukhang inaantok yung iba, pansin na pansin naman. Okay lang po yan. Malamig talaga dito, no? Tsaka medyo lumalamig na, no? Kagabi medyo naggaling ako sa wedding, eh. Medyo galit na galit yung, ano, yung ulan, eh. Pero masarap at malamig. Pero anyway, so I believe kahit medyo inaantok tayo, meron tayong masarap na kakainin today. Amen? Sino gustong kumain ng masarap? And ako, gusto ko <laughs> masarap. And medyo madami-dami yung kakainin natin yun. And uh, I believe uh, as we go through this se- series, maraming nagagawa sa ating mga puso at isipan at even sa relationships natin, di ba? This series. And pang lima na po ito. Fifth of our series called Beyond Kings and Kingdoms. And 13 days. Sabi mo sa atin yung 13 days? 13 days after the election. Ayan, kumusta mo yung katabi mo? Mukha na bang... Yeah. <laughs> Ayos ba tayo dyan? Ayan, 13 days na po after the election. And I believe many things happened in the span of, you know, almost two weeks. And I uh, just want to ask you, how are you? Ayan, how are you? How is everyone doing? What are the things that, you know, occupying our minds this season? And even today, ano ba yung nagre-rent sa isa isip natin? Meron ba kayong mga ganoon nagre-rent sa isip mo pero dapat hindi pinapatalsik mo na yung mga nagre-rent na yan, mga, walang, hindi naman nagbabayad, di ba? Tapos nasa isip. Ano yung palayasin mo na sa utak mo? Alright? And there are times, of course, I feel that we need to evaluate ourselves, tama? And there are means of evaluating. So many, so many means of evaluating. But ako, for me, I just want to encourage everyone, if we really want to evaluate ourselves, we need to value the Word of God. Amen? If we need to evaluate ourselves, we need to value the Word of God. So today, we are, we're going to glean. Pumunta po tayo sa chapter 5 ng Daniel. Ready na po ba kayo? Kasi babasahin ko po lahat to. <laughs> Actually, kilahat, kilahat. Eh. Pero madali lang po itong maganda po ito. And that's what we're doing here. We're worshiping God through the Word. Amen? When we read the word, we are actually worshiping God. And that's what we're doing here. Kaya nga po worship service to, no? 
So we're going to start off reading Daniel 5. Now, in reverence of the Word of God, we're going to read the first 12 uh, verses. So please stand on your feet. Get your Bibles ready. And uh, turn to Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. Verse 1, it says, King Belshazzar made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in front of the thousand. Belshazzar, when he tasted the wine, commanded the vessels of gold and of silver that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem be brought. That the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. Okay, binanggit, may mga binanggit na tao, no? Then they brought in the golden vessels that had been taken out of the temple of the house of, the, of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver Bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Oh, very clear, no? Verse 5. Immediately. Everybody say immediately. Immediately. The fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. Opposite the lampstand. And the king saw the hand as it wrote. The king's color changed. I see the the king's color changed, and his thoughts alarmed him. His limbs give way, his knees knocked together. The king called loudly to, to bring in the enchanters, the Chaldeans, and the astrologers. The king declared to the wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and shows me its interpretation shall be what? Clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Okay, clear pa, no? Verse 8, then all the king's wise men came in. But, everybody say but. but. Parang hindi natuto yata yung mga Babylonians. But, they could not read the writing and make known to the king the interpretation. Verse 9, then King Belshazzar was greatly alarmed and his color changed and his lords were perplexed. Verse 10, the queen, everybody say the queen. Ayan, talagang praise God for, for godly. You know. The queen, because of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banqueting hall and the queen declared, O king, live forever. Let not your thoughts alarm you or your color change. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, made him the chief of the magicians, the enchanters, Chaldeans, and the astrologers. Because an excellent spirit of knowledge and understanding to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve problems were found in, his, in this Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and we, he will show you the interpretation. Let's pray first. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, we can be nourished today with your word. And thank you also, Lord God. It's not, it, it will not only inspire us, but it will change us, Lord God. Change us from the inside out. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You may now take your seats. Now, very clear po yung ating mga binasa kanina. Medyo i-clear ko lang yung ibang mga parts kasi si Belshazzar is not King Nebuchadnezzar, di ba? Now, Belshazzar is a young king, well, quite incompetent, <laughs> but he's a young king and he, you know, was referred to as the son of the King Nebuchadnezzar, no? But he's really not the son. He's, uh, some historians says, apo, apo daw siya, okay? And some others in law na apo, yeah. Marami mga interpretation. But again, because of the line of the kingship, of the regency, okay, ano siya, son. Now, Belshazzar is actually the king after Nebuchadnezzar, but in between them, there's five kings pa, okay? So marami pang kings 
dun sa dumaan bago si Belshazzar. Pero si Belshazzar is actually a co-regent. Ibig sabihin, meron pang isang king. Sino yung isang king? Si Nabonidas. Okay? Actually, between them, ang dami-daming mga, <laughs> mga nangyari. Okay? More than 25 years, I think. And si Nabonidas, actually the father of Belshazzar. So ang nangyayari at this point, Nabonidas and actually si Belshazzar, they're actually co-regents. Okay? Co-regents sila, ibig sabihin, si, pareha silang nagro-rule sa Babylon. But itong si Nabonidas, mahilig magbakasyon. Sino ba sa inyo mahilig magbakasyon? Oh, si Nabonidas, mahilig magbakasyon. So nagbabakasyon sa lagi, sa Arabia. So ginawa niya, oh, si Belshazzar, sige, ikaw na lang co-regent ko, ikaw mamahala dyan. So, be, so basically, King Belshazzar is the king. So okay, let, let's get that out of the way. So this is King Belshazzar. And what happened here, of course, nagkaroon ng piesta, actually feast, okay? And nag-inuman sila, marami silang mga choice wines. Probably may pulutan din yun. Sa term lang natin, <laughs> marami sigurong pagkain din no. So talagang ang, ang uh, picture ay debauchery. Alam nyo po yung debauchery? Okay? Yung busog ka na, kain pa rin. Yun ang debauchery. Okay? Ano ba yung uh, gri- greed tsaka gluttony? Uh, parang ganon. Ganon yung itsura. Okay, uh, lasing na lasing na, ilum pa rin. Yan, yun yung itsura nung party nila. And imagine a thousand of his lords and kings and concubines and wives. Ganong kadami. Ilan ba tayo dito? Mga around 300, no? Mga around that. So, four times natin. May dami nila. So, that's what's happening. And then, of course, we understand na may word na immediately. In-emphasize natin kanina yung immediately. So, sinabi, immediately, a hand appeared. Have you ever imagined this? Of course, we, we imagine this. May... Ang na-imagine ko dito, alam niyo yung sa Adam's family, yung kamay. <laughs> yung kamay na puto. <laughs> so anyway, yun lang yung na-imagine ko. But again, ito yung sinabi, there's a human hand that has a writing uh, material, I don't know, pen pen or marker. Pero nagsulat siya ng something dun sa wall. Ang nangyari kay King, matindi. Dinescribe eh, yung nangyari kay King. Nangyari sa kanya, his color changed. Tingnan nyo katabi mo. Ayan, di ba? Meron na, meron na akong joke. Ah, wag na lang. <laughs> May joke ako, wag na lang. Meron daw kasi hindi napigilan. No? <laughs> meron daw kasi, na, meron na akong nakita sa Facebook. Sabi niya, wag ka magmahal daw ng maitim kasi hindi daw siya pwedeng magpaliwanag. Parang ganun. Oh, sabi ko, ang kulit naman itong joke na to. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, King Nebuchadnezzar, ay, King Belshazzar, his color change. Hindi ko alam, may team siya, maputi siya. But his color change. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, talagang bothered siya. And hindi lang nag-change yung color niya, yung kanyang joints daw sa hips na dislocate. Tapos yung knees niya, nagnanak. Ayoko nang gawin. So, nagnanak yung knees niya. Talaga, nakakita na ba yung ganun? Ako nakakita na akong ganun. Kabadong-kabado siya nung nakita niya yun. And ang ginawa niya, oh, lahat ng mga matalino, <laughs> eto, grabe. Hindi pa sila natuto, no? Lahat ng mga matalino, enchanters, astrologers, halika na, kaya nga nila, kaya sila nagkakaroon ng ganun sa Babylon. Kasi para may mga masosold na ganitong hindi nila masold. So, ang dami nila, enchanters, and all, all these guys came in. And of course, none of them can interpret the writing. But this is a writing. Hindi na to dream. Diba? Before, dream yung ini-interpret na hindi pa, hindi pa, mang, hindi pa nga sinasabi ko na yung dream, diba? Nebuchadnezzar. Pero ito, writing. And I, I think it's very, well, compared to yung sa dream ni Nebuchadnezzar, ito mas madali. Kasi, writing na siya eh. Ando dun na siya. Interpret, i-interpret mo na lang. Ano mo ang tubig, sorry. I-interpret na lang. And the, the ano, the enchanters and all the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the, the wise men, quote-unquote, they cannot understand the writing. Tapos merong queen mother, ayan, may queen mother na pumasok sa, ano, sa banquet hall. Oh, king! Sabi niya, live forever, etc. Et and there's this, I know this one guy. His name is Daniel. And he can interpret the dreams. And that's what he did. Okay? 
So let Daniel be called. Doon tayo nag-stop kanina. Now, there are many characters here, but I want us to focus on two main characters. The main characters here is Belshazzar and Belteshazzar. Okay, sino si Belteshazzar? You know, may sumagot doon. Yeah. Daniel, he's Belteshazzar, pinangalan siyang Belteshazzar ni King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, Belteshazzar means uh, protector of the king. Ayan, yun yung ibig sabihin lang nun. So he, we have two characters, Belshazzar and Daniel. Okay, para mas madali. Belshazzar and Daniel. Now, very opposite yung kanilang uh, depiction dito sa chapter na to. So that's what we're gonna do. And Belshazzar is a new king. Si Daniel is an old Daniel. Okay, actually, baka ano na siya. Estimate would be 70 to 80 years old. Okay? So very mature and very, uh, well, he's old. Okay? But this is actually the day of the downfall of the empire of Babylon. This night, this chapter dito, this is the downfall. This is a very significant event. So let's focus here on these two main characters, si Belshazzar and Daniel. Si Belshazzar, he represents what not to do. Meron ba mga ganun? <laughs> Para matuto ka, kailangan mo malaman yung opposite. Tama? Ako, ako usually ginagawa yun, the opposite. There's always an antithesis to a thesis. Ayan, so, okay. So, si Belshazzar is what not to do. Si Daniel is what to do. Ayan. So, mas madali natin maisip. So, si Daniel, he, he honored God. Amen? He exalted God. And Belshazzar, what he, he did, he dishonored God and he devalued God. That's what he did. So very, very radical and very clear yung ating pinag-iisipan dito. At hindi, hindi nyo mamimiss to, promise. Kung mamiss nyo pa to, ewan ko na lang. Now I'm gonna read from verse 13, okay ba? Can you open your Bibles with me? So verse 13, sabi doon, Then Daniel was brought in before the king. Okay? Doon tayo nag-stop kanina. Now Daniel was brought in before the king. The king answered and, he, and said to Daniel, You are the Dan, that Daniel one of the exiles of Judah, whom the king, my father, brought from Judah. So, kilala niya. Okay? Ikaw pala yun. Verse 14. And I have heard of you that the spirit of the gods is in you and that the light and understanding and excuse, excellent wisdom are found in you. Verse 15. Now the wise men, the enchanters, have been brought in before me to read this writing and make known to me its interpretation, but they could not show the interpretation of the matter. But I have heard that you can give interpretation and solve problems. Now, if you can read writing, the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Kaya third ruler of the kingdom. Kasi sino yung unang ruler? Si Nabonidas, tapos si Belshazzar, tapos yun. Third kingdom, third ruler. 17, verse 17. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Ano sabi niya? Let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Nevertheless, I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. So, with this verse, you can see verse 17. Let's, ano muna, no? Verse 17. And verse 17. Ano yung napapansin nyo kay Daniel? Wala na siyang pakailam dun sa mga gifts. Bibigay ko to sa'yo. Okay lang, king. Let it. It's okay. You don't have to give it to me. Give it to another. And I believe this is very important to us because the value system of Daniel is, is right. Alam niya kung ano yung kailangan. Alam niya kung ano yung mas kailangan. Alam niya kung ano yung mas importante. Importante sa kanya, o sige, I'll, I'll, I'll still interpret the dreams. Yung, yan yung mga, sige, ibigay mo na lang sa iba. So, nag-gets nyo? And there are times, may ganun sa atin. Eh. Ako, minsan, ganun. Ako, may, may ano, meron tayo, ma, meron tayo dyan. <laughs> Pag may kawasa, oh, baka meron tayo dyan. Gagawin ko na ito. <laughs> Gagawin ko ito kasi meron ako makukuha dito. Ay, mo mas maganda to. Eh, dito lang tayo. Huwag na yan. Nag-guess nyo? 
yung value natin minsan because of what we can get, not what we can give. Well, in a sense, Daniel is old. And he, he has experienced prosperity. He has. He has been the ruler of Babylon. Diba? Binanggit yun sa mga ibang chapters. And he has been the leader of all the enchanters and the magicians. And he has prestige already. And he has uh, a name. And with that, he has the power. But at this time, medyo obscure siya. Wala na siya. Kasi after five, uh, five kings, medyo hindi na siya kilala masyado nitong Belshazzar. So medyo nagkakaroon na ng obscurity. Pero nevertheless, sabi niya, sige. Di ba, obscure ka na, hindi ka nakilala. Uy, may makukuha ulit ako. Magiging third ruler of the kingdom ako. Uy, pwede to. Meron pa ako ano yan? Gold, uh, basta yun. <laughs> gold, gold chain, purple robe. Maganda, di ba? But no, sabi niya, it's okay. I'll still interpret that uh, writing. Now, Daniel cared more about the service than the reward. Rewards will come. Well, that's my take on this. Rewards will come. Don't worry about it. But let's focus on serving. Amen? Let's focus on doing what we are called to do. And he's been called to do this. You need to interpret this. And he has been called to do this. No. Verse 18. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar your father's kingship and greatness and glory and majesty. So, kinakausap niya na yung king, no? Verse 19, and because of the greatness that he gave him, all the peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would, he, he would kill. And whom he would, he kept alive. Whom he would, he raised up. And whom he would, he humbled. Verse 20, but when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened so that he dealt proudly, everybody say proudly, he was brought down, wow, from his kingly throne and his glory was taken from him. Verse 21, he was driven among the children of mankind and his mind was made like that of a beast. And his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. He was fed grass like an ox. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven until he knew that the Most High God rules the kingdom of mankind and sets over it whom he will. So, na imagine yun nangyari. Last week, pinag-usapan natin to. Pastor John's preached about this. Nabaliw. <laughs> Nabaliw. Naging uh, parang baka. <laughs> Kumain siya ng ano. Kumain siya ng mga ng grass. Naulanan siya. Para siyang wild man. Okay? Tarzan. No? Wild man. Pero after that, he realized, eh, he realized that he, he you know, na, na, nagkaroon siya ng ulirat ulit and he worshiped God. And he had the best. And actually, he had the best. He has the right theology who, of who God is already. And si Belshazzar, he knows this in verse 22. And you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, though you knew all this. Medyo mabigat to, mga kapatid. Alam na ni Belshazzar yung nangyari sa tatay niya, o sa, yun, kay, sa lolo niya. Pero hindi mo pa rin hinambol yung heart mo. Nabaliw na yung lolo mo. Nakita mo nga eh. Tapos bumalik siya sa ulirat niya. Tapos winorship niya si God. Nakita mo yun, di ba? But you did not humble your heart. Pride comes before destruction. Much more if we are, we already know what's right. Kung hindi mo naman alam tama, yes, may ano si Lord doon, may weighing scale si Lord eh. Ah, okay, hindi naman niya pala alam pa eh. Pero mahirap yung alam mo na. Hindi mo pa rin ginagawa. Gusto kong bumait, pero may konti lang yung tumawa. Hindi <laughs> nyo alam yun. There's a value in that. And Belshazzar knew all this. And he did not humble his heart. Verse 23, But you have lifted yourself against the Lord of the heaven. Yun yung matindi doon. You have lifted yourself against the Lord of the heaven, and the vessels of this house have been brought in before you, and you and your lords, your, 
Inisa-isa, no? Lords, wives, concubines have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver, gold, bronze, iron, wood, stone, which do not see or hear or know. But the God in whose hand is your breath and whose are all your ways have, you have not honored. Yung hininga mo, hawak-hawak ng Diyos yan. Yung ways mo, hawak-hawak ng Diyos yan. Hindi mo siya inonor. But imagine this. This is Daniel. Kinakausap niya yung king. Wala na talaga siguro sa pakialam, no? Papat, pwede siyang patayin nung king ka right there and then, eh, di ba? Pero hindi, wala na siyang pakialam. Sinasabi niya kay king kung anin dapat niyang marinig. And he is actually expressing that in this manner. Hindi mo winership, hindi mo inonor si God. Eh, ang Diyos pa naman na may hawak ng hininga mo. Hininga. Oh, everybody breathe in. One, two, three. Ah, one more time. Ah, yan, hawak ni God yan. Yung hininga na yan. Buti meron, no? Sino nagpapasalama dito may nakahinga kayo ng malalim? <laughs> Di ba, minsan, hindi na rin napapagsalamatan si Lord yun. Nakakahinga pa tayo. Alam ko, may, may mas tayo. Pero at least, meron tayong hininga. Di ba, nagpapasalamat tayo dun. Ako, well, uh, maraming dramatic stories about this. No? But again, let's uh, consider that. God holds our breath. God holds our ways. He does. He does. And alam ni God yung ginagawa ni Belshazzar. Kaya nga siya, <laughs> nagpakita ng kamay, may sinulat siya doon eh. Kasi, winay na talaga ni God si Belshazzar. Alam na kasi niya eh. Na, nakita mo na yung lolo mo, hindi mo pa, hindi ka pa nag-humble down. Nabaliw na siya. Hindi mo pa naisip yon. So God weighed. Now, let's, I'm getting ahead of myself. Verse 24. Then from his presence, the hand was sent, and, and, and this writing was inscribed. And this is the writing that was inscribed. Mene, 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 tekel, and parsin. Yun yung nakasulat. Mene, mene, tekel, and parsin. Ito yung ibig sabihin sa verse 26. This is the interpretation of the matter. Mene, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Remember I said kanina, this is the night of the destruction of the kingdom of Babylon because it is numbered in days. Verse 27, Tekel. Ang ibig sabihin ng Tekel, you have been weighed. You have been weighed in the balances and found one thing. God is a just God. We all know that. He is a just God and He weighs whatever needs to be weighed. Especially in our lives. He knows everything in our lives. And He can weigh everything in our hearts. Because he, there, are th- there are things that we really don't know in ourselves. Nga, di, di ba? Minsan, mar- ay, ako pala yun. Ay, nagawa ko. Ay. Si God, alam niya lahat yun. And He can weigh us properly. But ganito yung way. Alam niyo yung weighing scale dun sa justice system. Yung merong babae, tapos nakapiring, tapos yung may weighing scale siya. Tapos, uh, pagbabigat to, Tapos lalagyan ng balance dito, balancing ano, justice. Ganito tayo. We are being weighed. And our sin is this. Okay? Talagang, ano tayo, bagsak talaga tayo. Uh, hindi, mag-aang pala tayo. Mag-aang tayo, sorry. But si Jesus Christ, what God did on the cross, Jesus Christ, talagang matindi yung ginawa ni Jesus Christ on the cross. Now, tayo, mag-aang talaga, wala tayong ano, wala tayong magawa. Like, like, King Nebuchad, uh, like King Belshazzar, we are all weighed. Wala po, wala po sa ating bumalansi doon. Yung goodness ni God, sobrang bigat. Yung ating uh, kasalanan, sobrang walang, ano, walang value. Talagang yari tayo. So that's why we need to have some value. And that value was given by none other than Jesus Christ. Kaya nagkaroon ng balance. You guess nyo? So, etong nangyari dito, si God, sinasabi kay Belshazzar in the kingdom, many, many, tekel. 
you have been weighed. And you have been found wanting. You have been found wanting. In Paris, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Now, verse 29. Then Belshazzar gave the command. Ito na. And Daniel was clothed with purple. Parang wala nang value sa kanya. Pero yeah, he's clothed with purple. And chain of gold was put around his neck. And a proclamation was made about him that he should be the third ruler of the kingdom. Now, he's the third ruler of the kingdom. Ay, pero masisira ni Babylon. Siguro kung alam, kung nakinig talaga siya, no? nakinig talaga si, si Belshazzar kay, kay Daniel, baka hindi na nangyari to, yung proclamation and all, yung gifts. Kasi mamamatay na silang lahat eh, after an hour or two. But he did that. So hindi talaga siya nakikinig. Now, verse 30, that very night, Belshazzar, the Chaldean king, was killed. And Darius, the Mede, received the king kingdom, being about 62 years old. Now, Darius and Cyrus, si Cyrus, nabanggitan natin sa last time, di ba? Si King Cyrus. Cyrus is Persian, uh, Darius is Mede, okay? So, the kingdom that, that uh, overpowered Babylon is the Medo-Persian kingdom, okay? So, nagsanib para masalakay. Si Belshazzar. Okay, but that's an information. Nabanggit ko kanina, we have two main characters, Daniel and Belshazzar. Belshazzar is what not to do. Daniel is what to do. And Daniel is basically honoring God whatever situation in his life. Obscure na. Wala na, hindi na siya kilala eh. Pinadala. Call in Daniel. Ano naman to? <laughs> ano naman nangyari dito? Sige, pasok ako. But it's okay. He wants, he, will, he still wants to serve. Even though he's in obscurity. And some people really, you know, I'm not, hindi ko dinala, no? Some people really want prestige. Yung talang gusto nila yung prestige. Gusto nila yung, I'm the man. Ako dapat to. Praise me. Okay. Worship me. And that's Belshazzar. Worship me. Nebuchadnezzar din, ganun din. Worship me. If you're not gonna bow down to this image, you're gonna be thrown in the fire furnace. Later on pa kasi yung kay, ano eh, kay Daniel, yung sa lions din. No? Worship me. Worship me. That's Belshazzar. Daniel says, oh, I'm going to worship God. I'm going to worship God. Even if no one sees, sees me. Even if I'm alone. Even if I'm just with my family. I'm still going to worship God. Even if hindi nakita yung magandang ginawa ko sa kumpanya, I'm still going to worship God. Even if hindi nakita nung teacher na magaling ginawa ko, hindi man lang ako napuri. Hindi okay lang, sige, I'm still going to worship God. Even if hindi nakita ni tatay, Yung ginawa ko na maganda para sa pamilya. <laughs> I'm still gonna worship God. Even if hindi nakikita yung worship ko, yung honoring ko kay God, I'm still gonna honor and worship God. So, conclusion, honor God even in obscurity. Even if no one sees us, let's honor God. Amen? Honor God in the day-to-day mundane things. Kasi dun talaga nag kakaroon ng maraming problema. Yung mga mundane things, boring na to. Yeah. Doon nagkakaroon ng problema, doon nagkakaroon ng sin eh. Sa totoo lang. So, honor God in the day-to-day mundane things. Honor God by praying for our healing from the pain of losing the election. Amen? Not all of us won. Not all of us lo- lost. Some of you won. <laughs> I lost. Okay? But let's honor God. Amen? I want to give a disclaimer. I did not vote for Lenny or BBM. I did not. Okay. But I lost. Okay. So. so honor God by respecting and being sensitive to the people who lost the election. Amen? Honor God by praying for our new president. Amen? Amen? Mahina. Yo. Honor God. By humbling ourselves to the authorities or the authority figures in our lives. Amen? 
we all have authority figures in our lives. Are we honoring God? Let's honor God by proclaiming the good news that we are all weighed and failed just like Belshazzar. In some way, we are Belshazzars. But yet, we are loved. Amen? We are loved unconditionally by Jesus, the highest authority figure of all. He is the highest authority figure of all, and yet He loved us so much. He loved us so much. Jesus holds our very breaths and our very ways, and yet He loves us. He cares for us. He even blesses us. And Daniel is actually a miracle of God's love for the Israelites and also for the Babylonians, for the Medes and the Persians. And uh, I believe we can emulate or we can follow Daniel. We can be a miracle to someone's life. Amen? May marami nagpe-pray dyan eh. Marami nagpe-pray ng mga bagay-bagay. And sometimes we feel, oy, may pinagpe-pray siya. I think, sinasabi sa akin ni God, i-bless ko siya ngayon. Kahit wala nang makakita ko, okay lang. Amen? Hindi naman kailangan makita yun. Actually, mas magandang hindi makita kasi si God nakikita naman lahat eh. We can honor God with that. And let's be a miracle to someone's life today. Let's be a miracle in someone's life today. Yesterday, I had another, another chance to witness a miracle. I, I did a wedding yesterday. Kasama ko pala si Tisius. And galit na galit yung ulan. Garden wedding. Oh, imagine, garden wedding, galit na galit yung ulan. So we're praying. Si Lauro kasama ko. We're praying in the middle of the tent. Buti nga, may tent eh. We're, we're, thank you, Lord, may tent. Pero, pero galit yung ulan. Sabi may bagyo ba? <laughs> Wala naman. Pero we, we still saw the miracle of God's love yesterday unfold. And if we have Jesus, if we have Jesus, we'll continue to experience that miracle of God's love every day in our lives. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. Most of all, in those mundane things in our lives. If we have Jesus, we will have a beautiful, not, not a happy, only happy life, but a beautiful and honorable life. You want that? I believe all of us, all of us want that. And with that life, Again, we can be a catalyst of creating a culture of honor in our own simple way. Culture of honor in our own simple way. Kasi si ano, Daniel, he's a catalyst of honor. He honors to whom honor is due. In honor talaga niya si God. Imagine him saying to King Belshazzar, this God holds your breath. In honor pa rin niya si God. He holds your breath. He holds, because he really holds your breath and he, he really holds your ways. And us, we can have this culture of honor in our own simple way. Amen? Now, I'm, I want to call on the music team. We're going to worship God in a while. But uh, we're going to pray today. And I know some of you, maybe later, if you want to be prayed for by some of our leaders, we are here to pray for you if you really need to. And within the week, you can also do that. You can go and, and text or and you, can, you can go to us. We can, we can pray for you. Amen? We are available for you. And some of the Victory Group leaders, are, I, I, I'm appointing you now. No? You guys are, you, need, you, you can be available for those people who need prayers. Amen? But even if you're not a Victory Group leader, you can be available for prayers. Amen? And that's our simple way of honoring. So that's our simple way of creating a culture of honor. Let's pray for one another. Amen? Lord, we thank you. For you said in your word in Hebrews 6.10, For God is not unjust, so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown in, for his name in serving the saints, as you still do. Lord, we thank you that you know us. 
You love us. You see everything. Alam mo yung nangyari in the past. Alam mo yung mga sinow namin na seeds. Alam mo po yung mga pinagpray namin mga tao. Alam mo po lahat yan. And I believe all of these things that happened in the past will never be in vain. Amen? It will never be in vain because you are our God. And Lord, help us for God to hold on to you. Hold on to your graces. Hold on to your power. Hold on to your promises in our lives. Because there's so many promises. Lord, we're holding on to your promises that you are the God that we can put our trust in and you can mold us. You can call us. You can bless us. You can equip us, empower us so that, Lord, we can bless others, pray for others, and be a catalyst of creating a culture of honor. Thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity that you have blessed us with, Lord God. Can we all stand? Can we raise, can we raise up our hands? Close our eyes. I know you know this song already. We're going to worship God. We're going to pray. God right now and say, Lord, here I am. Mold me. Use me for your glory, Lord. Thank 
you so much because you are a powerful, amazing God, the one who can put our trust in, in as a Filipino, Lord, not only as a Christian, but as a Filipino. We can trust in you, Lord, that you are sovereign over all. You are sovereign over our city. You are sovereign over our province and even our country. Lord, we thank you that you know the season of our country, the season even in the personal lives. Lord God, you know that. And Lord, we put our trust in you. And you in prayer, Nami Karina. Here we are, Lord God. Use us in this time. Use us, Lord God, to bless people. Use us to pray for people. And I agree with, with Jesus kanina. <laughs> yung, uh, ikaw na kayo na-offend. <laughs> ikaw pa yung nagano. That's powerful, amazingly powerful. Lord, use us, Lord God. Bless your people. We thank you, Lord God. But Lord, we can do this because of your power. Not because of our own might, not because of our own talent, but because of your power and your sovereignty over our lives. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May His countenance in your lives overflow that people will know that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Praise God. All right. God bless everyone. We are done. Tapos po ang ating service. God bless you. And if you need prayers, okay, again, we are... Uh, welcoming you. We are here to pray for you. God bless.